All right, 2.4 is a fairly straightforward section, I think. We're going to take the idea that we already know of matrix multiplication and apply it to submatrices. So let me just start you off. I know you know this, but it's going to be good to have the basics right in the front of our brain. Uh, so let me just start you off with reminding you how matrix multiplication works. I'm just making these numbers up. When we're multiplying matrices by hand, which isn't that often, but when we are, we sort of have two different ways to look at things. We can look at it as sort of repeated vector multiplication. So you multiply the matrix first by negative 2, 1, then multiply it by 5, 4. Or another way to keep track of the numbers is to sort of match up a row with a column. And that's the way that I want to look at here. So we're saying if we want to compute this first row, first column answer, then we'd look at the first row. And we'd match it up with the first column. And multiply and add, and that would give the results. So in this case, it'd be what, negative 4? plus 6, uh, so 2. But I don't even want to go that far with it. I just want to say this spot would be 2 times negative 2 uh, plus 6 times 1. And then we could go on from there. And we could say if we wanted to get the um, we want to get the second row, first column spot here, out of my four spots, I would look at the second row matched up with the first column. It would be 1 times negative 2 plus 7 times 1. Okay, and I won't do the other two spots, but uh, you know this process for how to multiply matrices together. Okay, so that was our warm-up example. Um, let's say that we're looking at just a slightly bigger example. Um, of course we could, if some mean person made you do it, you could still multiply all this out by hand. Um, and just think for a minute what the, uh, what the size of the resulting matrix would be. This is a 3, uh, this is a 3 by 5. We're multiplying it by 5 by 3. Uh, that means there's five numbers here to tell you how to combine these five columns. When you combine them all, uh, you're going to get a single column, and you'll do that two more times. So you get three columns of three numbers each. So you'll get a 3 by 3 result. And again, if you wanted to do the very top left, corner, if you wanted to do first row, first column spot, you would again take the first row, match it up with the first column, and hopefully I can do this right. Let's see, this will be 5 plus 4 is 9, plus 0, plus 0, plus 6 is 15. I think hopefully you get 15 in that first spot. But it's still that same idea of matching up a row with a column. Um, so the idea, so that's, this is all review so far. So the idea with partition matrices is to take this multiplication problem, and instead of looking at it as one giant problem, um, to chop it up a little bit. Let's see, where will I chop things? I'll just chop it right there and right there and maybe right there and right there. So I've essentially chopped my two matrices up into eight. Um, just for the sake of some notation, I'm going to put some letters on these, so let's just call these A, B, 
C, D, E, F, G, and H. So now that I've chunked up my matrices or partitioned them, to use the right word, uh, it can be shown that you matrix multiplication works the same way with these chunks. Treating each chunk like it was just an individual entry in a matrix, I now sort of have a chunky 2x2 two two times a chunky 2x2, two two, uh, the results. Uh, the results will be a 2x2, two two. and looking at these individual chunks as entries, I'm still going to say my first column, first row entry will be the results of doing A times E plus B times G. And of course, these are not just numbers anymore. Now they're sub-matrices. Uh, but you can still do it the same way. And if you wanted the um, second row, first column, you'd do second row times first column. So that would be a C E times a D G. Um, and we could go on and do the do the other two same way. Um, but let's take a look at this and then talk about why we'd want to do this. Okay. Uh, so first of all, obviously with the matrix calculator, it's not that hard to just do the original problem. Type in your 3 by 5 and your 5 by 3 and you get results and that's great. Okay, so let's look at my chunks. So A was just the 1, 4, 2, negative 2, 1, 3 portion and E was this 541906 so if I wanted to do AE I could do those I could multiply those chunks together uh, 142 negative 213 541906 uh, that gives me something I don't really recognize that gives me 952 negative 919 fine well and good that is that's AE keep in mind I still need to compute BG uh, so B and G are both 2 by 2 matrices there uh, 0 3 negative 1 5 and 3 negative 1 2 0 uh, let's do that part next um, so there's that little chunk that also gives me something I don't necessarily recognize, 6, 0, 7, 1. Um, but if I now finish my process here, I've got AE, I've got BG. Uh, let's go ahead and add them. Let's do that one plus that one. Now I finally do get something I recognize. That's 15, 52, negative 2, 20, which all the way back up here is 15, 52, negative 2, 20. It is indeed the first chunk of the results written right there. Uh, we would still have to do things like CE times, or CE plus DG, uh, hopefully, which would then produce 22, negative 1. When we did C times E and D91 times G and added those results together, we should get 22 negative 1. Uh, and so far, you are saying to yourself, congratulations, Abel. You have found a way to make matrix multiplication by hand even harder. Because um, now we're doing like multiple matrix multiplications and additions just to get the same results we would have out of one big one before. Um, so what's the advantage here? Uh, two advantages. One, this is good for us for some theory in the future. 
uh, if we are looking at matrices that don't have all the chunks filled in with numbers, like maybe C is unknown. All right, I've got an X1, X2, X3 in there. Uh, this will allow us to deal with that in a more efficient way. Um, the second answer for partition matrices is one that we're not really going to use in this course, uh, but I know some of you know this, that uh, matrix arithmetic is often useful in programming. And computers have limited memory. They can only hold a certain amount of a matrix at one time. Uh, so you can certainly chunk up your matrix so you can put it all into RAM and actually do the computations more quickly. So this is a computational efficiency thing here. We are not going to deal with matrices that are too big for computer memory, thankfully. <laughs> uh, but this gives us a little bit of an idea of what you could do. Um, so that's it for this video. We'll look at a couple examples and a little bit of notation in the next video, and then you'll be ready.